Here we are with some more uh, discussion about attribute sample. So basically we have two types of sampling, either attribute sampling, which is about more to assess the characteristic of a control. We call it design of a control or test of controls. And the other um, type of uh, sampling is um, a variable sampling. So the attribute sampling is basically more focused on uh, a discrete uh, variables which means that either we are looking for a compliance or a non-compliance of a control uh, and it it specifically more pertains to the design of the control uh, as I've mentioned that it is mainly used for uh, sampling the, uh, the, the uh, when, when we are applying the test of controls that we use the attribute sample however it doesn't mean that it cannot be applied to a substantive testing but to the greater extent we apply or we distinguish between attribute and variable sampling by focusing more attribute of a control when we apply attribute sampling um, simple example which i have given you whether you have a lock or not or access control are being uh, protected or not sample size it depends on following uh, there are different ways by which you can determine that how big or small sample size you have to take to carry out your uh, audit procedures uh, confidence level if you have a greater confidence if you want to achieve a greater confidence level then you need to have a greater sample um, to to give the opinion on that after reviewing that data um, if the population size is bigger, then again you have you need to have a bigger sample size. Uh, expected deviation rate. If you believe that the uh, the standard deviation within that uh, data sets or multiple data sets, the standard error is greater, then you have to increase your sample size. If it is lesser, then you can decrease your um, uh, sample size tolerable deviation rate if you have less tolerability then you have to increase the uh, the, the the sample size if you are more tolerable then you can um, decrease the sample size while evaluating the sample results you have to see what is the sample deviation rate and what is the upper limit of that deviation for example if you believe that within a range of two to five percent of deviation is acceptable then it's fine but if there is a over and above that deviation that that become your audit finding other attribute of uh, sampling methods are discovery samples so discovery sample is when we carry out the uh, or we look for the um, uh, we review the data the sample data unless until we find a single deviation in that data because that might be a possibility where in the in the the audit objectives which we want to meet out of that review is of a very critical nature even one instance could lead to a major uh, risk to the company maybe it may be a major non-compliances for example it happened in the um, in the financial institution where I have seen that money laundering uh, to any illegitimate person maybe uh, to a terrorist or maybe a country which is under embargo or a ban list from the US if you made a transaction with those kind of a, a countries or a, an institution or a client in that country it might lead to major uh, complete legal complication within your countries so in that we can use an approach of discovery sampling which means that it is not fixed but we will look at the data till we find deviation and accordingly uh, we can look at what is the deviation rate maybe it's material maybe it's not material are we supposed to go further or we can stop there um, the other way is stop and go sampling in which uh, again the sample size is not fixed but the auditor reduces the sample size if it if it is if he believes that the the deviation is within the acceptable limits 
or increase the sample size if he believes that the, uh, the deviation is not in the acceptable limits just to extend to see that to what extent that uh, gravity of issue is there 